Hey guys, it's Trisha Carr. I have new exciting things going on with my Mystic Arts Academy. You can now subscribe to receive all of the live monthly content for about a third of the investment of a single class. Included are at least one downloadable guided meditation per month, two live events ranging from classes, channeled messages, group readings, intuitive development guidance, Q&A sessions, and tons of community. You'll also have access to a private Facebook community for fellowship and support, and this space is kept super sacred and high vibrational. Your subscription gives you access to the whole library of classes and live events, which are on a vast array of topics. All events are offered online by Zoom video call, and many are also offered live in person at my studio here in Los Angeles. Subscribing to the Mystic Arts Academy is also a way for you to support the Charmed Life podcast and engage on a deeper level. I'm offering the subscription at a super low rate of $22 a month. Joining now locks in this rate for as long as you're subscribed. Click on the description of this episode or go to my website, trishacarcharm.com, and click on Mystic Arts Academy. I look forward to connecting. Welcome to Charmed Life, a multimedia podcast discussing spirituality, magic, and the unconditional love of the universe. Thanks for tuning in. And I am your host, Trisha Carr. Welcome to this episode. I am really excited to get into all of the exciting topics today. I'm excited to be excited. Oh, <laughs> that's how I always am. And I want to remind you guys that my 2019-2020 bridges over from one year to the next animal communication program. The registration is live now. Do go down to the description and check it out. I have so many people asking me to offer this live every year, and I only do it live once per year, even though it's on demand other times just the education portion it is an amazing community of people growing in their ability to communicate with animals in nature and I'm about to do a show talking about how animal communication actually accesses more manifestation for humans that's what they're here to help us with so just to give you a nudge in that direction we'll be starting in about a month I think it is from the time that this is being published and with that I'm really excited again to welcome my guest today. Her name is Carrie Hummingbird. She is a soul guide and channel. She is the channel and embodiment of White Eagle, who is an ascended master who specializes in rainbow light activation of human DNA. Oh my gosh, my crown is just tingling away as I say the words. <laughs> welcome, Carrie. Oh, and also the host of Soul Nectar Show. And I actually was just on Soul Nectar Show, so we'll have to make sure we put a link in the description for that show that we did together. But you can find it and her links that are all in the description. So I'm going to stop talking and let you talk. Hi, Carrie. <laughs> Hi. I'm so glad to be here. I was, yeah, I loved your interview on Soul Nectar's show. It's great to be on your show now and to, to trade places. This is exciting. It's so exciting. Yeah. And I just love the energy that you just conduct and transmit. And as you said, as, this, as I said, you are the embodiment also of White Eagle. And I want to hear all about that. Before we actually get into to the now, I know people would love to hear about your awakening journey. And you actually have a book about your awakening journey called Awakening to Me, One Woman's Journey to Self-Love. Would you like to share with people how all of this amazing experience came into your life? Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's always, I know you go through this as well when you're like, okay, what do I talk about today? How do I <laughs> tell my narrative? So, you know, my my journey basically began with some early childhood trauma. You know, just uh, my mom was, you know, as women often do, choosing relationships. And sometimes the relationships we choose are not necessarily conducive to raising children. Mm -hmm. You know, so yeah. that was the case. And uh so I had a rocky start. I had three different dads from zero to five. Mm. And then the last one stuck. So he was an awesome dad. Mm. And he I had him since I was five years old until he passed away just two years ago. Oh. So, um, but, you know, that early beginning, my dad had a wonderful um, impact on me the rest of my life. But that early beginning and then the tension between my mother and I that's just kind of gone on my whole life really created some friction within me. 
that led to decades of psychotherapy. Mm. And, you know, this wasn't like a casual pursuit. This was like, I've got to figure this out. <laughs> like, mm. this is, this is uncomfortable. It's beyond uncomfortable. And I've got to figure out like why, how to fix this, how to fix me, how to make me acceptable, you know, in the world. And, and because no matter how many great grades I got and how awesome I did, I just never felt accepted or validated or like I was worthy. You know, mm. it doesn't matter how well I did, how many accolades. Mm -hmm. I always felt like I was the problem maker in my family or there was something about me that was causing everybody else to be uncomfortable. And mm -hmm. I didn't understand why, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so there was a lot of learning that happened in psychotherapy. And then it sort of hit a brick wall where it just felt like a repeating story. I don't know if you've ever had that experience where it's just like. With therapy. Yeah, with talk therapy. Well, I mean, I'm sure for some it's it, – maybe it is the whole journey of uh, – but for – obviously where you are now, like there was more, you know, with that. <laughs> the model of psychotherapy is scientific. And so it's, for the most part, they use tools that are about repeatable results. And so those are the tools and that's the end. Although there are some therapists who are very intuitive and they actually do transpersonal psychotherapy and you know what I mean? Like, and that's awesome. That might have been an expansion for you, but I think you want to, you would have wanted to expand even beyond that into where you are now. <laughs> yeah, I think that's true. I think I've always been bigger than life and yeah. you know and trying to make myself fit in mm -hmm. and I don't fit in mm -hmm. so I just I finally surrendered to that but basically the psychotherapy tunnel the thought tunnels and the repeating those stories it just made everything worse and mm -hmm. then when I was and I had diagnosis from the time I was like 15 because of my erotic behavior and things mm -hmm. you know like yeah. I was being a teenager right but <laughs> you know how that goes and yeah. it's like oh no you can't act like this this is not right so by the time I was 38 um I just had a combustion, you mm -hmm. know, I combusted basically. I combusted from trying to like narrow the field, control myself, make myself smaller, make myself fit in, make myself perfect, figure out how to be for other people, walk in on eggshells inside of me. And I just, what happened was I actually, this is so funny. I'm going to tell this story, but um, <laughs> this is the story that's coming to me. So I, I actually got invited by a friend to go to a slumber party. And this is like, this at, is a at party 38? where the, <laughs> it's a party where you explore feminine toys. Okay. Oh, and, okay. How and fun. I never would do that. Like yeah. I was very uptight, mm -hmm. you know, my sexuality because of my mom's mm. energy around my natural father, my first father who was starting to molest me. Oh gosh. Yeah. That energy was present my whole life around my sexuality. Mm, yeah. And so, so and I, were you yeah. also like your mom wasn't shut down probably, but but she was a bit out there and then you responded. I mean, maybe this is too personal, but I'm just, that's what it seems like. Because some people, they, they actually mirror their parents' patterns in order to figure them out. And then some kids, I should say, and some people do the opposite <laughs> in order to figure them out, right? That's how, that's how I've noticed. I mean, that's what I've done. I, I think, I think she had a lot of, I think, you know, it, listen, I was born in 1969. So mm -hmm. if you look at what was going on at that time, yeah. there was a sexual revolution happening in the sixties and seventies. Yeah. Right. And so people were exploring boundaries on things. Mm -hmm. And my natural father was one of those guys. He was exploring the boundaries of sexuality. And my mom was sort of going along, but she was a Midwest Texas girl. She was not built for that like mm -hmm. that was that was very risque for her it was beyond her comfort zone what was happening and then I was born into that environment when she thought she wasn't gonna be able to have a baby you know and then mm -hmm. here was me you know yeah. big surprise you know because <laughs> this giant energy coming through <laughs> you into the world yeah so she was just unprepared for the whole thing mm -hmm. you know and so that energy of fear, like she had somehow messed me up or that I was damaged because of my natural father or something was going on, like that whole energy like followed me my whole life. So that was also part of it. So mm -hmm. I repressed my sexuality because I felt, you know, whenever I embraced it, I went kind of wild, you mm -hmm. know, and then, then I would get this criticism and I would be sent to psychotherapy. So I kind of realized like at 38 that, um, that repressing my sexuality is actually damaging my psychology. You know, mm -hmm. actually it was very damaging for myself and my relationship. And uh, I realized that when I got my first toy, you know, when I had, and I experienced what you're supposed to be experiencing in your body. Mm -hmm. And I got angry. I got oh. really angry at my ex, my ex former husband. Wow. All of the was like, wasted time. You, yeah. Yeah. Basically. Like you've been having this. <laughs> 
what? <laughs> yeah. I was so mad. And so it wasn't all his fault, right? Because it was me repressing my sexuality. Mm -hmm. But that's a part but of the he, process to, yeah, you know, to be either, an easy to, target. You know how that goes. <laughs> yeah, it's a part of the process. And then you go, oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Projection, you yeah, know. Yeah. But I think that, um, so that was really what unlocked. And your spiritual journey actually has a lot to do with your access to your energy, which mm -hmm. is your kundalini, which is your orgasm, your sexuality, your ability to have flow. And I was all gunked up. Like every single chakra was locked up because I wouldn't explore it because I wouldn't go there. And then as soon as I start, I had my first toy, my first experience with that toy, all of a sudden, it was like Pandora's box, like the lid got flung to the far reaches of the universe, and <laughs> I was off on an adventure. Like, there was no stopping it. I mean, I would go to psychotherapy, and I'd be like, oh, my God, I just, like, roped some guy in at the art show because I was an artist, and I was doing art shows. I just roped some guy in to have sex, and oh, my God, like, I couldn't stop myself. Like, that was kind of... I, it, I would go to psychotherapy and I would say, I just did this and I'm terrible. I'm a terrible person. So then oh. I would go and berate myself. And oh, no. it, it yeah. was, so it got into a spiral. Mm. And basically what happened is it wrecked my marriage. My, we were trying to figure out how to put bounds on that or control it. And there was uncontrollable. Like there was just nothing to be done with it except let it run its course. So that's what we did. And I ended up leaving. I left psychotherapy. I left my former husband and I just said, you know what? I'm just going to be bad. I'm just going to let it happen because it needs to happen somehow and I can't stop it. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to open to another path. And that didn't take very long. It was like six months after I was free from my former husband that I met my first spiritual teacher and he was a yogi. You mm -hmm. know, I started going to yoga mm -hmm. and that led to my first shamanic teacher you know, mm -hmm. uh, who is uh, in Austin. And the only reason I found the shaman, my shamanic teacher, was because my friend was telling me this story about how um, she had been like healed by one healing session with a shaman and it changed her life. And, and I was thinking, I was still in the mode of thinking I need to be fixed. Like, however I am is not okay because right. everyone's telling me it's not okay. You know, so I must be a problem. Mm. So I, I immediately lashed onto that and I went, okay, sh I went Googled at home that night, like shaman in Austin. I found my first teacher. Nice. So and that's, that was, that's the basic journey that's, for how That's I got. amazing. Well, yeah, it, like you're saying, the kundalini, you know, the base of the chakra system is right there. Well, there's obviously survival, but there is sexuality and sensuality. And it's almost like... If we look at it dimensionally, that first dimension, second dimension, as relating to the chakra system, you can't even get up to the identity center unless you start to feel your body, you know what I mean? Like in the earth and connection with another and autonomy, all of this stuff is, is right in there. And you know, I'm, I work with animals in nature and when I, t when I teach about animals in nature and when I teach about like the fairy realm and the elementals the energy there is very much like sensuality when you, when people say like how do I connect with fairies and I'm like well you you got to be like you're going after a lover I, mean, I don't mean physically aroused but <laughs> the way that you go after a lover is curious respectful and knowing who you are in that as well knowing what you want and and putting that in there you putting that in there and <laughs> putting that out there <laughs> Because and that's kind of the energy of the universe. You gotta you gotta be in possession of who you are in order to call in what it is that will co-create with you. Because that's how free will works. It's absolute free will, right? Yeah, and you know, and knowing yourself. I love that you said that. You have to know yourself, and you can't really know yourself when you're all clogged up. <laughs> and the energy, it's like it had to unpack. Like you're saying, like you, it was uncontrollable because it was. And energy has to go somewhere and it had been packed in there so much and so it just had to be like <laughs> right it had to be aired out a little bit <laughs> it had to be you know 40 40 years of airing it out I mean yeah because so it happened really it, that old, it was know, happening in about I... six months did it start to even out is that what you're saying so that's pretty good you know 40 years of cramming it in there for six months of getting it <laughs> letting it flow it's not bad it's like a couple years you know where mm -hmm. I was uh cheating and then I because I would have this in, irrepressible urge you mm -hmm. know and then I would go home after the art show and I'd be like oh my god I just did it again and this is not me trying to hurt you like I am not trying to hurt you mm -hmm. I don't know what to do about this like I need I can't control it like it's just it was just it was a raging storm so yeah. I basically had to go through that experience and 
when I look back on it now, it's like, oh, well, I had all this clogged up energy and all of my chakras were like, and I was just tightening and tightening and controlling and, Mm -hmm. and trying not to feel anything. I mean, I was on those, those not feeling pills, you know, I was on like everything give you in psychotherapy, like don't feel anything. Right. That's uncomfortable. Then take this pill. And it's like, well, I think we have to let it go. We have to let the flowing happen of the discomfort. (laughs) We don't, it doesn't, I was like going really down to the bottom of the wine bottle. And uh-huh. you know, here's a really interesting thing now. Like I used to judge my wine consumption, but now I'm like, wait a second. The wine was actually trying to help me loosen up. The yeah. wine was trying to relax me mm-hmm. so that I could actually receive some pleasure, mm-hmm. you know, because I wouldn't let myself have any. Mm-hmm. Right. And it's, uh, it's just, uh, what we think about what alcohol does, it, it lowers inhibitions, and that's what you needed. You were so inhibited, so it was so it, uptight. It was a tool. Now, obviously, when there there are certain chemicals and substances that are just so far, like interrupting in the energy. I, I mean, they, they probably even a single use. They don't really benefit us. But not all not all substances or tools or whatever are equal. Not all things are e- are tools. But if if it's not an if it's not a problem, then it's not a problem. That's really kind of it. Sometimes people they do they get into a, a new spiritual journey, and someone's like, "You have to be." I'm completely pure of all things, and I I don't drink and I don't anything. And then this newbie's like, "Oh my God, I'm so not spiritual yet because I've had I drink wine." <laughs> you know, yeah. it's just it's not. Well, I, did, equal. I think it's a process. You yeah, know, like, absolutely. If it's I, if it some people have one glass of wine will destroy your body for the next day. It's just how your chemistry is set up. And that's what you're calling in to understand. But not necessarily. Not necessarily. And and it's also the intention. You know, yes. like tobacco is another one of those where yeah. a lot of people have this idea that tobacco is evil and it causes cancer and all this kind of stuff. And it's like, well, yeah, if you're using it without intention, the proper intention, and you're abusing it and disrespecting the plant, you're going to get some cancer. Mm-hmm. Yes, you are. You know? Mm-hmm. But if you're using it in a sacred way, the indigenous people know how to use tobacco and they use it for prayers, they use it for healings. And when you use it with intention and correct, you know, the correct usage, the plant is amazing. It's yeah. like your best ally. Mm. So I'm like best friends with tobacco. Mm. You know? <laughs> so I, I feel like I've learned a lot on this journey and it's in a sort of like upside down world before is what I like to call it. Like, you know, the world I, that I thought I knew before that with following all the rules and the conditioning and the domestication and the, and the rules of our society is like upside down world. And when you finally wake up, it, it takes a little disorientation because it flips on the other side. <laughs> it's like everything is inside out. Wow. It's so interesting. It's so true. I honestly really love that you're talking about this part of your journey. Like you said, oh, I'm just going to go with it (laughs) because I actually do myself. I talk about sexuality and sensuality. It just comes up sometimes. And it's kind of unfortunate because people we're we're so conditioned in this U.S. puritanical Western, not just U.S., it's I guess other Western cultures to get like shy and embarrassed about it. And I think that that's telling of that energy that's being repressed. And so thank you so much for sharing the conversation this way. I think it's really important. Yeah, it was, a, it, you know, this has been a journey of healing my own shame, you know, because shame has been a big part of my journey. Shame showed up when I was one years old and my mom walked in and saw my natural father, you know, mm. fondling me and helping, you know, teaching me how to fondle him. Like it was just, my mom was just my mom had shame. And and as a little child, you know, I was very empathic and I knew that something was wrong and I thought I did it. Right. So right then one years old, I think I'm shameful and bad for doing something. This happens to so many children, Mm. you know, so many children that adults are perpetrating things and the children think they're the ones that are making it happen because that's how their brains work. Of course. And that can gear your whole life. And I'm here to testify that it did. Mm -hmm. And it's really only in the last Because this is a journey. I mean, this is, I've been on this healing part. Well, I've been in the psychotherapy world most of my life, right? But this actual healing part is the moment I met my shamanic teacher I was telling you about. Mm -hmm. That part is started changing. Then it started to change. And so that's eight years on that journey of change to the point where I finally, the other day, I was like, you know what? I don't accept that. I I had a sexual revolution and there's nothing wrong with it. Yeah. Like there is this subtle apology. If you read my book, Awakening to Me, I wrote that book right when I met my first teacher. I was told, you know, start writing. You're going to chart the course out of madness. I was like, (laughs) okay, that's really big and ominous. (laughs) Okay. But 
like I started writing every day and I just wrote the book for two years as I had epiphanies and realizations and I knew it had to go in the book and I wrote about things I did not want to write about like the fact that I had contracted herpes you know early in my journey too which is all about shame it's it's there to help you learn about shame so I you know all the way through that book is this subtle apology, like, oh, mm. I'm so bad, you know, is this sort of like really subtle thing, like I'm somehow wrong or bad for having a sexual, you know, experience that I couldn't contain. And now I'm like, you know what, I'm taking that back. It is my sexual revolution. And I actually needed it for my spiritual journey. Like it was an imperative to learn how to feel pleasure because spirit is love like yeah. spirit is love in that in this in its essence is pleasure there's no sterile spirit experience right like it's a deepening into love is what it is and you it's a deepening into being held and supported and knowing it's like a heart opening like your heart opens and and you just want to cry with gratitude like that that kind of good feeling inside of you that makes you want to like expunge your heart you know and get rid of all the crust you know and just kind of show up with love like that is the beauty of the journey I'm on right now oh, and gosh, it so started wonderful. with my sexual revolution yeah I love that and like you said you were born <laughs> during the sexual revolution <laughs> and you had to go yes there was a reason why I chose 69 <laughs> from the free birth <laughs> and oh my gosh the iron the other two <laughs> the 69 so ironic, right the summer of 69 and here comes Carrie bam yeah, yeah. so you had to have your 69 when you were 40 <laughs> but that's okay <laughs> it happened that's what... <laughs> at least it happened finally <laughs> Thank, you know, and yeah, it happens thanks. regularly now, which is great. But, <laughs> good, good. you know, but I also, you know, being um, in an intimate relationship with your with your own body. Oh, yeah. That's the first step, you know, to really yeah. know yourself. But then to do it with a partner is like a whole nother level because all this stuff comes up like the crest. I like to call it the crest. It's mm -hmm. like the crest around your heart in the in the projections and the stories in your brain and the insecurities and the little defenses. And then pretty soon, if you're not paying attention, you got a little wall, you mm -hmm. know, and then the wall gets bigger. It's like you've got to maintain that every single day. And that's what it means to walk the beauty way is mm -hmm. to to really guard your love, like to to know that your only purpose here is to expand your heart and deepen your vulnerability to feel even more, like not less, right. more, you know, right. feeling everything. That's the whole point. Mm, yes, because because you are everything. So that's true. That's authentic. That's authenticity. Feeling everything is is accurate because there is no separation and we're all just one. So it makes it's just logical, really. It's only logical, as Spock would say. <laughs> well, yeah, but we try to wall things off, right? Yeah. And this is something you and I talked about with the light workers. Mm -hmm. Is a lot of light workers are like, "Ooh, negativity is icky." Oh, right. And it's you know, it, it what it is is it, there's not really if we're talking about contrast, if we're talking about being in the illusion to any degree, you know, we can be in the illusion and in the full picture and the completion as well. But to be in the illusion to any degree is is contrast. So negativity is a part of it. And if it's in your experience, then you've called it in because you want it. That's, again, the most fundamental experience of just energy. Yeah. And like the experience of shame, you know, just mm. take that, the experience of feeling shame. It's like, don't avoid it. Go into it. Yeah. Go all the way through it. It's not going, it's not stronger than you. Right. It's there to make you stronger. Like it's there's a property a of you. It, it isn't, it's a property of you. It's, it's not you and it's not above you, but that's what it feels like when we are, when we're trying to resist it, when we're trying to get away from it. And again, that goes back to the mentality of a child, we don't know any better. And so we think bad, bad death, you know, shame, bad death. Okay, we need to not do things that allow this shame to be here because it separates me from my mom or whoever my primary caregiver is. And that's it. It just gets stuck there until or unless we actually open it up, open up that Pandora's box and see what's in there and allow it to flow then, allow it to flow. Ooh, who was it? I just heard someone say that uh, oh, yeah, that's right. It was someone at school saying that emotions, there's a beginning, middle and end to emotions, to feelings. And when we're in resistance to them, it's because we aren't willing to see the end of those emotions. And that's all it is. They're just there to flow through us, the, the, those experiences. Yeah. And there's certain emotions and experiences that are there to dislodge you from your stuckness. And mm -hmm. they're, they're typically seen as bad, mm -hmm. but they're actually great catalysts. So like rebelliousness, for mm -hmm. example. Mm-hmm. 
that's that actually is there to catalyze you out of your stuck place. It's there to get the energy flowing again and like remove the boulders, you know. Like, yeah. And anger is another one that people really are terrible about anger. That oh, it's awful. I'm scared of it. I don't want it. But anger actually, if you if you look at anger without attachment to uh, violent action, anger actually is just a powerful fire like energy to to boost you out of your current stuckness and into a new place. It's, it's there to get you to take action. Yes, those are both very active. Well, they say, you know, if you are complacent or if you're in depression or something like that, a depressed kind of situation, anger is actually a good step because it's it's activating. It's, motiv- it's motivating. It's moving from a low arousal negative space to a high arousal. Maybe it's still negative, but you're getting closer to movement to a, you know a high arousal towards something. Then you can channel it into the positive space that you of your creation energy. Let's talk about, can we talk about your channeling? Oh my gosh. When did you yeah. start doing it? Tell us all about White Eagle. Tell us about rainbow light activation. And oh my gosh, go, go. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> I'm going to shut up for a while. So, okay, you're <laughs> asking me about the embodiment piece. So sure. when I had my first spiritual healing, that's when I started waking up because all of a sudden I discerned that there was multiple different energies within me where before I thought I was one thing. Then I realized, oh my gosh, I'm not one thing. I've got all this stuff inside me and you can take it out. You know, yeah. like you could take some of it out and transmute it. I, that was a huge awakening in 45 minutes. And once that happened, I was like, whatever this thing is, I'm doing this. Okay. Cause there's, a, I need more love, you know, in my life. So I'm going to do this. So I started on that path and then really quickly, I started opening to my ancestry that mm. was uh, related to this path, which is Cherokee. So I'm part Cherokee. And I'm not on the rolls. I mean, I don't know how to find it because my grandmother changed her name. She could pass for white. So, you know, I, what I did was I thought, okay, well, I I can't find it third dimension. I'm going to go to Cherokee village. I'm going to go see if anybody there knows, Mm because I'm going to go to the Smoky Mountains. So that's what I did. Mm -hmm. And the first year I went and asked the questions, I got like nothing, you know, like they were like, nah, you know, we're, that's kind of how it is. You know, like the first few times you ask, they just send you away Mm because they're, like you're not serious, right. but I went back two years later and asking some of the same people, and they are like, "Okay, she's back again." So she's motivated. So she cares. <laughs> yeah. She's motivated. Yeah. But she wants to do it, and she right. they could feel the energy of it. I was sure. crying. You know, I was like desperate. Like, please, I need this. So I met with this man who uh, I got led from one person to one person to another person. Finally, I got led to this man who was working the demonstration for the flint knives and he said I'll meet you in the parking lot and I'll talk you know in a few minutes Mm -hmm. so I turn around to go to the parking lot and I had my two sons with me that particular trip and all of a sudden I felt like this softball size energy just like like somebody flung a softball into the back of my head like where my head meets my neck Uh uh-huh the occipital bone yeah which is where the causal chakra is attached to yeah, and I now know that that's like the mouth of God. Like yeah. that's where your ancestors can right. interact with you. Yeah. So I that's what happened to me. It, oh my it, gosh. And it, as soon as it came in, I felt it like it was crazy. I could see the trees breathing. I was like disoriented and dizzy. And I was like, what's going on? I just, I told my sons, I got to sit down. I don't know what just happened, but wow. something just came in through the back of my head. Amazing. And what, what is this? So, but it was cool. So I was sort of watching the trees breathe and everything and just sort of like wondering what this is. That stayed that way for a few weeks, you know, that, that sensation. And then I was in my training program with the Four Winds. I was uh, studying with the Four Winds, Alberto Vialdo's school Mm -hmm. of shamanism. And I was learning from the Caro teachings and other teachings that he integrated into his teach his uh, medicine program. And so I was working, all of a sudden I was working with this Cherokee peace chief. I'm like, who is this? Mm. Somebody from my ancestry or something. So I didn't really know that was White Eagle. I had no idea. Mm. I just knew I was working with this Cherokee shaman who was on the Trail of Tears and he was wounded and upset and grieving and there was a lot of unprocessed emotion. And I was assisting with that because yeah. it mirrored my own journey. So we've been helping each other for years now on this healing from the inside out and integrating and supporting each other people often see him like other healers would see a clairvoyance would see him like standing behind me like kind of with his arms crossed (laughs) early on like and they'd hear hear, they hear him say like too many thinking too many thinking (laughs) he was constantly telling me i'm thinking too much and thinking too much is actually gets in the way of the channel yeah so 
this has been a process of integrating actually this energy with me. So I didn't even know, Trisha, I did not know who I did know, but I didn't know. Like mm -hmm. I would get these signs. Like I went to Alcingate on a sacred journey with uh, Alberto Vialdo on the summer of 2016. And up on the mountain, like if you're not, uh, if your heart is not pure, Alcingate will make sure you can't breathe and you'll have to head down the mountain. Like that's just how it is. That wow. mountain is powerful. Wow. And the last day on the trip, we go up to the Rainbow Lagoon and it's 16,500 feet to get to the top. Oof. And I'm, you know, I'm not a spring chicken. Okay. So <laughs> I was the oldest, well, I wasn't the oldest person on the, the group, but I was set pretty close. So the night before we're going to go up there and I knew I had to go because I already heard the call. Like I need to go to the Rainbow Lagoon. I don't know why I need to go up there, but my body physically needs to be in that space. Mm -hmm. So I'm going. Alberta says to me, it's the only one he said anything to. He leans over and he touches my leg and he's like, well, Carrie, you know, you've had some trouble breathing, you know, since you've been up here, you might not want to go tomorrow because mm. you don't want to deprive anybody else of getting up there. Cause you know, if you can't make it, everyone's going to have to turn around. Oh, wow. I was that's, like, You're, that's a heavy load. What? That's a heavy load. <laughs> I tossed and turned all night. I was like, I knew I was supposed to go. Oh my God. So I just made the decision I'm going. Mm hmm. And the whole way I'm looking at Alcingate because it's this huge snow covered peak, you know, I'm walking, we're walking like through to the terrain and I'm looking at Alcingate and I'm like, you better help me get my butt up there. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Do not abandon me. <laughs> so a part way up, there's this, I see this pile of what looks like snow mm -hmm. and nobody else sees it. They all walk past it. And I was near the end because I was <laughs> struggling to walk this at the altitude and I walk over to it. And it's a white eagle. You mean like an act, a physical one? Yes. Was it's a deceased, he, like it had uh -huh. fallen. Oh, wow. Oh and it gosh. wasn't snow. It was a white eagle. Oh, wow. How amazing. I know. It was like, what? So I took a couple of his feathers off the tip of his wing. I yeah. was like, those are mine. You know, yeah. I knew they were for me. And then the shaman came over. What are you doing? What are you doing? And he didn't understand, you know, what I was doing. He came and gathered up the whole bird and, and then we took it up to the top. So that was the first really big indication, you know, like, wow, oh, there's something interesting here. I love that the bird went up there. Oh, it's so beautiful. He went up there or she, I, who knows? I'm just going to say he, he went up there as a way to end his journey. And he, I mean, you guys aligned that, you know what I mean? He, yeah. it was, it was how he expired his life to be able to give you your life but there's so much symbolism there too because it was it seems like that was the death of the old you and a brand new you is beginning now and it was the death of an old part of me as well mm -hmm. from my ancestry mm -hmm. my Cherokee peace chief mm -hmm. he felt tremendous responsibility for channeling the messages he channeled from spirit that led to the decimation and death of so many loved ones in his tribe mm. and he had so much grief from that decision wow and I knew that that was important for me in this in this role I'm undertaking right now because we don't know what the outcome is going to be. Right. You when know, you're the channeling earth is truth. In a fairly it's not, precarious space. It's not our business. What it really isn't. If we're channeling truth or channeling love, light, healing, whatever, it's not our business. If it's unconditional, it's not our business. What happens afterward? Yeah, we just have. To, we're just here to be the messenger and yeah. to share the message of spirit and to hope that it all works out well. Yeah. But all we can really do is share the message of spirit and mm -hmm. do our best. And so that was my moment of releasing on behalf of my Cherokee shaman and myself, the, the feelings of guilt and responsibility that really is not, it's not, it wasn't ours to carry. And so we released a lot of that. And when I finally got up to the top, you know, it was like, wow, the rainbow lagoon. Mm. And I just sang to the rainbow keeper. There's actually a rainbow keeper up there. That's an energetic being that is like works with a, there's like a crystal portal and it's, it's like amazing, but it's like, this is, um, the rainbow light is the key to the ascension of humanity. It's actually really important because the rainbow bridge is a real place. Like it's a real thing, you mm -hmm. know, yeah. where he thinks, oh, the rainbow bridge. Yeah. Why do you think we talk about it? It's a real thing. Right. And we actually need to align ourselves with the rainbow bridge. We need to actually align our destiny with it. And we need to receive these energetic upgrades so that um, we can, we're, what we're really doing here is we are really ascending the consciousness, the human consciousness, so that the humanity can finally become a part of the galactic family, yes, right? Because exactly. we've been sort of sequestered because we were not behaving very well or like, you right. know, 
they're not going to let us out there right. to wreak havoc, mm-hmm. you know? <laughs> so we have to get, we have to ascend the consciousness of these, of this human form to the place where it can be a member of the galactic family and be a blessing. And that's what we're doing right now. And so many of us in the second wave have chosen to incarnate into these physical bodies to help with the ascension of the human consciousness from the inside out, which means interrupting a lot of the patterns that have been going on. And, you know, the human drama that's just keeps cycling and cycling with all this karma and like, oh, you, you stab me in the back. So next time I'm going to stab you in the back. And like, you know, it's like this is a game that's gotten very old you right. know, and we're ready for new games. Got to be. T- yeah, we got to get tired of it. And so how do OK, I want to talk about how people can work with the rainbow light energy for themselves individually and then talk to us about the second wave you have your uh how the second wave how long has it been out this is your book the second wave transcending the human drama oh my goodness yes we're like <laughs> yeah this so is what we're that. doing this is what we're doing <laughs> yeah but for, we have to start believing those intuitive insights we get and mm-hmm. not just let them fall back down under the surface of our subconscious like mm-hmm. like like on my journey, you know, for example, like I got the message of the white eagle feathers. I mean, how more specific does it need to be right. on my journey up there? There's a white eagle, really? Right. And then, you know, all my meditations and the work that I had at all the healing sessions with this. I, I did not know until three days before I published the book. I did a ceremony, a plant medicine ceremony, and it was like the clearest I've ever been. It was like this. This was the first time I'd worked with this particular plant and it just opened it all up. It was like, bam. You know, wow. like here and here is White Eagle, like almost sitting in front of me. Like, oh, by the way, let me connect the dots for you. Bum, 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 bum. I was like, you're kidding. Oh, my God. I mean, and that's all in the book. That's in the first chapter because I I had to write it all out. He's like, no, you don't. I said, no, I do because <laughs> I need to write it for you're myself. Arguing you know? with your ascended master. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, you know. I do. There, yeah, but no, it's okay. That's I, I love that. I want to point this out because people, again, wherever they are on their journey, they're starting to connect. There's not a hierarchy. There's only structure. Yeah. And so he, like you're saying, you're helping one another, you and White Eagle. And he yeah. is working through what he's working through and you are working through what he, you know, he does have a vantage point that might be a little bit more, um, a, a little bit more of a bird's eye view because he's not physical right now, but he's still not better or greater than you. Actually, we who are incarnated at this time, they call us the brave ones because we're doing this and because because it's easier to be in in the illusion and not remember the wholeness of what we are and that's so that's more of a challenge than what they are you know what they in the non-physical perspective anyway so like yeah like yeah no i do too tell him (laughs) i do like i told him listen people aren't going to understand like Mm -hmm. you're just going to jump right into this text and be like this is white white eagle like (laughs) no i need to tell them the story now like i you know he's like oh fine do it if you want and the reason that they partner with us is because we are the bridge because we are physical and the same reason why mediums are used to help people cross over because they're folk because people who have just gone from physical to non-physical and aren't moving forward on their path of light you know to us to their regular ascension is because they're focusing on physical people so we are the translators we're the transmitters of that message but he kind of like he's not in that he's like all right fine whatever (laughs) You know, yeah. it's not his job right now to worry about yeah. that that much. <laughs> He's really easy. And apparently I'm a con like uh, once you have the conduit ready, then other um, ascended masters can work through you. too. Oh, sure. Like, if yeah. You want to. You're tuned. So yeah. Uh-huh. I'm actually working with white buffalo calf woman. Oh, right I now. was wondering. I felt that actually when I read the white eagle bit, I was like, I wonder if she works with white buffalo calf woman. Actually, or maybe we did talk about it on your show, too. That's probably part of it. But <laughs> that's yeah. really awesome. Yeah, because mm-hmm. she's working to heal the mother wound. Mm. So that is her desire and so and of course it's one of mine you Mm -hmm. know because of I would love to heal that and have beautiful relations right so I think that um you know once you have a clear a clear channel then you can start receiving but you have to start trusting the messages that's the thing it starts off like you get these messages so journal it like don't forget it don't just let it slip back under you know actually acknowledge it acknowledge the messages it is real it is happening you're brain isn't going to understand it. It's, it's going to deny and think, oh, this is bonk, you know, I'm crazy. <laughs> but just ignore that part and keep going toward the messages and going toward the synchronicities and the signs because that is the work of spirit. Yeah. You know, we're unweaving the old story and we're, you know, we're putting things in right relationship. We're not going to get rid of the ego. That's not what we're here for. Mm-hmm. We need the ego, but we need it in a different spot. Right now, it's sort of been a little too in the driver's seat mm-hmm. and you know we need to put it in the back seat and let the soul take over and that transition 
is like that going through the cocoon, you know, the caterpillar to the butterfly and the cocoon is super messy, you know, it's <laughs> like confusing and messy and you need a guide through that. So yeah, yeah. that's the part that I help with is the cocoon, the messy cocoon part, because that mm. part is very tricky. You know, it's tricky to go through that and figure out what's my ego, what's my ascended master, what's my, you know, yeah. which one is which. Yeah. And, how, and so you, you do one-on-one sessions. Do you tell tell people about how do you help people and what is the structure of it how can people connect with you and and as a soul guide yeah so with uh with white eagle uh channeled some teachings through me a couple years ago called reinvent yourself which Mm. is basically reinvent you know caterpillar to butterfly you're reinventing well you're reinventing you're sort of like letting go of the personality self and you're kind of allowing the soul self to come through. Mm -hmm. So those are, that's like an online teaching program that's just there as a supplement and a a course. And then that way, when I do work with clients, it can be intuitively guided, right? As you know, like, because everything changes as you're going through with somebody that's very, you know, it's some, some of it's predictable that's going to happen and some of it's not. So that way on the group circles, I do group circles called butterfly circle. And then I also do, you know, individual mentoring that way that can be completely intuitively guided. And then there's a reference of the material. Oh, great. Yeah. It's basically the structure of it. That's amazing. Wow. Cool. Can you (laughs) explain the second wave? So someone's listening to this saying, and they're like, what's the second wave? What does she mean by that? We're in the second wave. What is that? Is this in alignment with kind of how Dolores Cannon talks about the first, second and third waves? It is. It's very mm-hmm. much in alignment. Um, I first, well, I didn't even know I was writing about the second wave until February. And then I said, oh, you're writing a book about the second wave. I'm mm-hmm. like, what is that? And I had to go back and, you know, like go ask what that was. Yeah. And Dolores Cannon, definitely, uh, she interviewed a lot of people that were in deep hypnosis. Mm-hmm. And she started realizing that they were talking about first wave, second wave, third wave. And she was mm-hmm. like, well, what is that? So she used the opportunity under hypnosis to ask, you know, interview people about this. Mm-hmm. So essentially, you know, the first wave you could think of as the, the master teacher's that came in like in the 60s, mm-hmm. you know, early 60s or even 50s. And then we're doing the bulk of their work right around that time, right? Even like music, you know, mm-hmm. like the, uh, what is it, Age of Aquarius, that mu- that song mm-hmm. in this, from the 60s? From the hair. Yeah, it's from the musical yeah. hair. Uh huh. Yeah, like that's totally a first wave thing, you yeah. know, because you're getting the vibration of ascended consciousness down through the music. Mm-hmm. And it's completely out of context for what was happening right then. Mm-hmm. So it was, a, it was a burst, right? Like my sexual revolution, you know, it was like, bam, you know, right. and all this light came in. So that was like the first wave. Well, and that paved the way, you know, the first waivers, they like Jose Stevens, one of my teachers from the Power Path, like Alberto Vialdo, one of my other teachers, they had to be paving the way when it wasn't cool to be doing the work that they were doing. They had to really be doing the hard work of making this, forging this pathway. So the second wave now can walk on that pathway. It's not completely smooth. You know, there's still a lot of like, you know, bushwhacking, (laughs) but, you know, but, 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 People in the second wave have more spaciousness to now be messengers. Yes. So the, a lot of the second wave is messengers and light workers and people who are really here to emanate, you know, to work on themselves, to ascend their own consciousness, and then to emanate that out everywhere they go is like the basic function. Right. And then there's some of us that have chosen to be parents and not Bring. very, you know, there's some of us who have been chosen to be parents. Some mm-hmm. of us chose not to get mm-hmm. engaged with that for karma reasons, like not mm-hmm. wanting to get too entangled with the earth experience. But some of us chose, you know, to be parents and get all entangled in it and to, <laughs> you know, <laughs> to change the biology for the yeah. children that we're bringing in. Because um, especially as mothers, you know, we have um, we have uh, shared DNA with our children. Mm -hmm. So we, we actually have shared biological material with our children forever. Mm -hmm. So every time we do work on ourselves, our children automatically benefit from the work. Right. That energy translates. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. We have the ability to heal our children, which is one of the reasons it's also important to heal the mother wound Mm. because each one of us embodying got a piece of that, you know, from our own ancestry. Like you would, it's just so amazing when I talk to second waivers and they're like, yeah, my mom, man, she was just so unloving, you know, and she's like competitive and jealous. And like, there's a lot of these patterns that run through the second wave experience. Uh, So it's just, it's really interesting. So if you feel like, you know, the biggest way to tell is that you keep getting these flashes of insight. Like I have a really important job to do. Yeah. But I can't remember what it is. <laughs> yeah. 
But it's supposed to be happening right now. It's like the, sign. It's like the the rabbit in Alice in Wonderland. I'm late for a very important date. I don't know what that is, but I know I'm late. <laughs> I know I'm late for it, and I can't remember what it is, and what I'm supposed to do, and where the keyhole is, and I don't know, and I'm freaking out, and there's something really important. Like that, yeah, if you're feeling that urgency, like if you've been feeling that urgency, like, yeah, now is the time. Like, and you and know. the answers are always going to be in you. You can get soul guidance and you can get readings and you can get mentoring. And that's actually going to be the person holding space for you to continue to go within. So I just say that because sometimes people, they might think a 15 minute psychic reading, what's my soul's purpose? And it's like, well, that's not exactly the format for you to get that. I mean, it could be, but it's really going to come with from within. So sometimes it is. someone in a 15 minute like online psychic reading saying, oh, you should be a shaman, that probably that may not just for example may not you if you take that from the outside and bring it within and try to bring it within it may not be the alignment it will the only way that something that comes from the outside it's going to align from within the way that the white eagle it aligned because you had already been connecting and then you got that out, outward confirmation of what was already inside yeah, and it was a lot of work. It was so I want to say, like, that. Yeah. this path, you know, if you chose to be part of the second wave and you're here to do this, that is a path of mastery, actually. Mm -hmm. And the only reason you're here is because you are a master from across the universe. You were selected because of your skill set. Yeah. And you might feel the very furthest thing from a master right now. You might feel, like, just so ridiculously out of touch. And it's okay because as, when you start remembering who you really are, it starts to get traction. Yeah. Um, but it's all about having really deep roots right now. Like Trisha on your journey, like I know that you've had to cultivate yourself as a big oak tree, like in order mm -hmm. to do the work you do. Right. To hold space and container, like you've had to get stronger and deeper, right? Right. Yes. And more consistent. And higher and taller. <laughs> stronger, deeper, stronger, higher, deeper, taller, higher, all taller. of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and like a bigger, can hold a bigger capacity. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. That's what this and the the and the thing about like you say the the second waivers have these experiences of the moms being unloving or whatever. But some of those first waivers, they had to have they had to have hard heads in order to b burrow down the new path. So I mean, some of those second waivers could have had actually first waiver moms, even though it seemed like wait, there she wasn't very spiritual. She may have been in the way that we needed it at that time. Yeah, and that's exactly the message I've gotten from White Buffalo Calf Women and mm. White Eagle. White Eagle's like. You know, here's the funny thing about that, because I have, you know, I have these issues, my mom and I, and, you know, we dance around each other, we do the dance, and during that, that medicine journey where it's like connecting all the dots for me, White Eagle's like, don't you think that I can make other people, you know, take on different roles as well? Don't you think that other, like, Ascended Masters could probably play, like, the evil character in your life just so that you'll learn everything you need to learn? Mm. I mean, don't you think that would be the biggest act of love is to, like show up as somebody like so challenging and difficult to make you dive deep within yourself and have your own strength and power because you really need it in order to do the work you're going to do. Yeah. Absolutely. And my job was like, <laughs> you're like, dang it. I thought it was all feely goody thing. <laughs> yeah. He's like, yeah, yeah. Old souls can pretend to be baby souls. <laughs> totally. Oh my gosh. Cause it's not for us to know. Wow. It's not, uh, it's really, it's like you're, it, this is a grand theater, you know, right. it's really, you can think of it like a big theater. So we're all playing a role. Well, this has just been so amazing, and we are out of time, but I want to tell folks about your, you're offering all of the Charmed Life listeners a free gift, and you can find the link to it in the show description. It's at thesecondwave.media, but tell everybody about your free gift. Yeah, so if you feel like, gosh, you know, I wonder if I'm a member of the second wave, but I'm doubting myself, I'm not sure, there is a meditation um, when you subscribe at the secondwave.media that walks you through it, actually helps you access your divine spark and, and connect that to source and then ask the question and get a clear answer. So if you're looking for that clear answer, that meditation is really helpful. Wow. And you'll also get like the first well, you won't get the, the new chapter. You won't get the chapter that tells the story about White Eagle, but you will get the first chapter of the book uh, to, to look at as well. Amazing. Wow. What a beautiful gift. Thank you so much. I'm really excited about that. I'm going to go and download that myself. Oh, please. You totally are. You know it. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, I, well, yeah, I know, but I still want to experience it. We always get new layers anyway. <laughs> yeah, we get new layers. You never know what's going to pop up. But totally. yeah, the rainbow light activation, you know, I feel like that is something that uh, White Eagle's specialty and, you know, I don't presume to be the only person White Eagle's working through sure, at all by any means. Like yeah, White yeah. Eagle's talking to a lot of people around yeah. the planet. Apparently, and he's, I just happen apparently to be... he's being a jerk to some people. <laughs> apparently, Yeah. <laughs> So, you know, it's the magical mystery of White Eagle right now. But yeah. I feel like, uh, you know, you can you can definitely uh, receive a lot of benefit from just opening to receive the rainbow light. And there's a lot of people working with the different rays even. Mm-hmm. And I think that's part of it, too. So there's lots of ways to work with the rainbow light. It doesn't have to be through this one channel, although I, you know, I welcome you to it if, it's, if it resonates. But there's lots of ways. You just perk up and the synchronicities will connect, right? Yeah, amazing. That's exciting. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tap in and see if uh, White Eagle would like to at least have one meditation with me. You never know. But yeah. I do, because I, I do work with rainbow light energy myself too. It just happens spontaneously. Oh my goodness, yeah. we are out of time. I could talk to you for ages. But I know <laughs> I could chat to you too. We maybe we should just have some regular coffee time, even though we're not in the same state. <laughs> but you have yeah, to come let's. back. Have to come back on the show. I feel like there's just so much more. Maybe we can have a little theme and do some second weave talker in talking for a little while. That would be amazing. Yeah, and maybe we could get some questions from totally from your audience about like the second wave and questions and things that they're going through, and we can channel some guidance. We could both channel White Eagle. <laughs> you guys, you hear her? Comment however you're seeing this. Well, probably you can't do it on the podcast, but comment on the YouTube video or go to Soul Nectar Show and you can find where, you know, what, mine and Carrie's conversation on her program. We, yeah, let's let's set that intention, you guys. Let's all do it together. Well, this has been an amazing show and I can't wait to do this again. Carrie Hummingbird, soul guide and author. Go get go and get her book, get the free gift. And um, well, thank you. I hope to do this again real soon. Thank you, Trisha. It's been a pleasure. And thank you all for tuning in. I love you, whoever you are. Hey everyone, it's Trisha Carr. I'm really excited because it is the time of the year for me to offer my Animal Communication Comprehensive Program live online. Whether you are interested in the profession or if you would like to connect more deeply with your own animal family members, having an understanding of this form of telepathy will enhance your life and all of your other intuitive gifts. About once per year, I offer this program live, and that time is now. It is starting in December of 2019, and this particular live program has some bonus time added in. So the way this program works is it is delivered live online, and we also have a private study group of a beautiful community of like-hearted animal and nature lovers. Go ahead and check it out. The link is in the description, and I hope to see you there. Thank you so much for your love of animals, for your love of our planet, and for shining your light on our beautiful world.